This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and live today. Jesus is the good shepherd, the one who lays his life down for his sheep. Now, by stating this, Jesus infers that we are the sheep that he has come to guard and protect. Now, most of us would not argue this fact, but come on, seriously. Why does he have to compare us to a common barnyard animal made of wool? What is Jesus really saying when he calls us his sheep? Why couldn't we be goats or cows or horses or some other animal? Well, I decided to do some investigative work to get down to the bottom of this mystery. And as it happens, I came across an informational website on sheep that could possibly be the key to unlocking the questions surrounding Jesus' choice of livestock in this tale. Now, the website was put together as a school project by a youngster as part of his 4-H club. In the website, the boy includes all sorts of information regarding sheep, ranging from sheep statistics, basic care, labor and delivery, costs and supplies. Now, under the heading of why raising a sheep is fun, the kid reasons that it's fun because of the following. He says, your lamb will recognize you and know it's feeding time when he or she sees you and hears your voice. Another reason he gave is that keeping yourself dry while washing a lamb is impossible. If you stay fairly dry for the bath, you will definitely be soaked when you lift that lamb up and put it on the carding table. Too cute. But the meat of the answer to my question comes under the title, how do sheep differ from goats? Yes, jackpot. So what are the differences between the two? What makes a sheep different from a goat? Well, the list is extensive, but here were some of my personal favorites. First one, sheep have fleece, goats have hair, with the exception of the Barbados sheep. Number two, sheep are more likely to overeat than goats. Be careful about turning sheep into a lush pasture or free-feeding them more hay than they usually eat. Number three, sheep say, bah, and goats say, ma. Seriously, their voices are different. And here's the clincher, number four. Sheep are stupid, goats are smart. We like sheep, but would never bet money on a lamb trying to find its way out of a maze. Now, this says a lot about sheep, but also it says a lot about us. Maybe we sometimes act in ways that could be considered a little dumb. Maybe we're not always aware of our surroundings and we tend to wander and stray away from God. Maybe we find ourselves in precarious positions, times when we are defenseless and in need of a shepherd to bail us out. Maybe we overindulge in things for ourselves instead of thinking about the needs of our neighbor. Maybe, just maybe, Jesus knew exactly what he was talking about. Hey, I can't argue with Jesus. I know from my own past experiences that I too am a sheep. I am a sinner in need of redemption. I am a disciple struggling to walk in God's ways. But through it all, I retain hope in the promise that the Good Shepherd is here for me, for you, and for all who believe. Jesus is our comforter, our provider, our guardian, our source of life. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. He knows his sheep, and his sheep know him. So why do we remain faithful to the shepherd we call Jesus? What makes him the good shepherd as opposed to the bad shepherd or even the mediocre shepherd? We have to remember that being a shepherd in Jesus' time, that was a big responsibility. A shepherd that was good not only knew the sheep, but it would also do whatever was necessary to protect those sheep. If something were to happen to one of his flock, the shepherd would have to produce proof that he was not at fault so that he would not have to make restitution for the animal. This meant rescuing from a lion or a wolf a sheep's leg or a piece of an ear or the flank of an animal. 
it was only natural for a good shepherd to jump to the aid of his flock, and sometimes this meant even risking his own life to make sure that his flock was safe. If we go the other direction, on the other hand, and look at what a bad shepherd or a false shepherd was, this was someone who was only in it for the money. His occupation was more of just a job rather than a calling, and he owned no sense of responsibility. This kind of shepherd would just run through the motions, you know, do the minimal work to see that the job was complete. I have to tell you, I would not want this shepherd watching over my flock, or better yet, watching over me. Lucky for us, Jesus has proven himself worthy of being our good shepherd. We live with and under his protection because he unselfishly laid his life out on the cross for us. Jesus crafts for us protection from our own sins, from the devil and all that is evil, and even from death itself. No longer do we need to live life in a state of fear and anxiety, for the Good Shepherd is our island of calmness in the hectic seas of our lives. But if we were to end the discussion right here, we would be foolish in ignoring the fact that while Jesus does protect his people out of absolute and unconditional love, he also has some aspirations for us, his disciples. And you see, this is where we differ from sheep. While sheep mindlessly graze in the pasture, satisfying their bellies, Jesus is heaping expectations onto his faithful disciples, the people he calls the sheep of his pasture. In Matthew 10, verse 16, Jesus has the following command for his disciples. He says this, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Notice that by staying committed to the Lord, we are not removed from the world of danger. Rather, we are sent out into a world filled with wolves and filled with danger in order to share the gift of God's love. It's not an easy task that we are being called to do. It takes some real work to shift from focusing inward all the time to looking outward on behalf of our neighbors. Through volunteer service in the community and mission ministries in our congregations, we are able to not only tell others about God's love, but to show them what the kingdom is all about. By thinking in an unselfish manner, we have the chance and the opportunity to shepherd those who are in need of comfort and care and those who thirst for the good news of God's abundant love. The Good Shepherd, our shepherd, has set the example. It's now up to us, the sheep, to recognize our shepherd's voice and to respond to his call of service and love. Amen. Remember as you go about your day that yesterday is gone, tomorrow does not yet belong to you. So why not live today knowing that you never walk alone? See y'all next week. Later.